Mate, today we have the Beethoven's Fist album under the spotlight. Ten tracks released 25 years back and still sounding better than ever. It's a record which incidentally stayed on my turntable for weeks. And we kicked off today's show with the album opener, Scene of the Crime, written by Mick Blood and Gerard Corbin. And I don't think you guys could have picked a better track to start an album with, could you? I loved the the intro to that track was uh, very powerful. And yeah, so we, we thought it was a natural fit. It was an opening track, yeah. Mm, it was a ripper, and that that was in the live set for a while too, from memory. Uh, I think it probably still is in the live set occasionally. Okay. Yeah. And mate, next track was in fact a single from the album Cherry Red, penned by yourself and Mick Blood. Great rock and roll song. Was that Virgin's choice to choose Cherry Red as a single? No, it, it was. Um, it was the band and our manager. Uh, you know, we we probably thought it wasn't the best track on the album to have as a single but we kind of wanted to put we thought there'd be more than one single and uh, mm-hmm. so, so it wasn't like we were leading with our best choice we, we kind of thought that this was this was a good song that would um, you know, attract a bit of attention and then maybe we'd put out something else uh, later as a, that, that would that we thought was going to be the big hit single that was, that was one of yours and Mick's wasn't it? Was that uh, floating around for a while that track? No, it, actually, none of the material on the album was floating around for long. So this hmm. was this was the, th- the third studio album. That's and, right. And of course, by the time a band's been around for a few years and done three or four albums, um, when you get to the, that stage, um, you're pretty much you've used all your sort of back catalogue, and so everything was. Um, written for the album and we we probably think we demoed maybe 25 or 30 songs for the album and then culled it down to our 10 favorites hmm. with with cherry red i can't remember but i presume it would have entered the indie charts did it slip into the mainstream charts as well no it, it did okay on the indie charts it didn't make it into the mainstream charts no Next up is Real Thing, written by yourself, mick and there's a songwriting credit to c morrow was that chris from the numbers maybe dolls uh, yes, it was, yeah. Okay, good, good. Mate, this could be my favourite track on the album. Um, mixed distinctive vocals, sharp guitars, to the point lyrics, and, and great lyrics like, if you see me in a limousine, I'll be the guy behind the wheel. I mean, what's not to like? Any thoughts on Real Thing, Phil? Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting one. Um, Chris and I actually wrote that song. We we were working together before I started playing with the Spiders, and... Uh, We'd, we'd written the, a version of the song, and then um, when we were looking for material for Bad Oven's Fist, I, um, I said, look, I've got this one. We haven't, you know, it's never been recorded. Um, what do you think? And uh, then Mick, Mick rewrote the lyrics, and we kept the chorus. Um, the chorus was already written, but Mick put his own lyrics on there, and that's why... Uh, yeah, Mick and Chris, I'm not even sure they'd met each other, but uh, yeah, mm. it was, I, I brought half a song and then uh, Mick put in the other half. But yeah, that, that was actually the song that um, our management thought we should have as the single, but uh, okay. that was, they were kind of, yeah, they wanted to save that for, to be the second single, but uh, a lot of things can happen along the way. Now, Kevin Shirley has made a name for himself as an in-demand producer, but he, in fact, cut his teeth on a host of local Aussie bands, including the Lime Spiders and including the album which we are highlighting today, which he produced and engineered. Good memories of working with Caveman, Phil? Yeah, look, he was a great guy to be in the studio with. Um, he was very, very good at guitar sounds, and, uh, and he, he was just a professional. You know, he was absolutely excellent. So you were pleased with the finished product? What, what do you think he brought to the table? Well, there's an interesting story about this, um, if you bear with me. He, um, he wasn't our choice of producer. We, we actually had lined up that Aerosmith's producer was um, going to do this. Well, well, sorry, no. Kevin was going to do the, um, all the recording, and then all the mix down was going to be done by Aerosmith's producer who was working with them on Pump at the time. And then we had studio time all booked and he ended up um, running overtime on Pump and couldn't do it. So he had to go and do a Poison album straight afterwards, would you believe? And uh, so, so we missed out on having him do it. 
And, uh, you know, so Kevin, Kevin wasn't actually our choice. But the funny thing is that, you know, years later, he wound up producing a number one hit for Aerosmith. So we, we got Aerosmith's producer. We just didn't know it at the time. <laughs> Who Was that Bruce Fairbairn from memory? I can't recall. Yeah. Who did the Aerosmith. Okay, yeah. good, yeah. good. Phil, the tune, Get Off at the Next Stop, is fantastic. Nice little riff throughout the song, but it's mixed lyrics, again, which for me are the standout. He paints a picture with his words in this one, all about a mechanic or a blue-collar worker who has his eyes on a pretty woman who snubs him. And I think we can all relate to that at some point of our lives. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, look, that, that was a great track that uh, you know, we all really liked that. That was actually, the version that's on there was actually the demo. Not the, not the, um, yeah, we did demos in a sort of budget studio and then we went into Rhinoceros to do the, um, backtracks and, you know, did fairly high end stuff for the rest of it. But when we, when it came to the crunch, we actually all decided that the demo sounded better. So if you listen to it, you'll probably notice it does sound a little different to the other tracks. But it's nice. It's a, it's a sort of fairly bluesy track and Jed's guitar solo on that is just a killer you know it's a it's a very musical solo <laughs> 